All right, joining us now, former Whitewater Deputy Counsel and former Deputy Independent Counsel, Saul Weisenberg. Saul, thanks for being here. So it's 14th Amendment land once again. Now you've got a Secretary of State leveraging that amendment. Please, from a legal standpoint, help us understand what ability or authority she has, if any, to be using that amendment here. Well, that's one of the things that the Supreme Court is going to decide, because I truly believe they're going to step in and step in quickly on the Colorado case, and they're going to overturn the Colorado decision, and they're going to overturn this decision by the main Secretary of State before it even goes through the main court system. And I think the reason they're going to do it is they're going to hold that the, the section of the 14th Amendment is not self-executing. What I mean by that is, Congress has to pass enabling legislation uh, before anything can happen. And you can't have state officials all over the country determining on their own whether or not somebody uh, is fit for office under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. Saul, so just a quick follow-up. In Colorado, it was the state Supreme Court who made the decision. In Maine, it was just an administrative process through the Secretary of State. Does that difference affect how the Supreme Court looks at this or how their ruling plays out once they make a decision? Not at all. That, that will have nothing to do with it. I think their decision will be based on, number one, is the president even a civil officer under the United States, which is a term of art? That's number one. What was the understanding at the time the 14th Amendment was ratified? Number two, can you do something like this uh, can, can any official remove the president without proper due process? I mean, this was a farce. This was a, a five-day hearing in Colorado and I think in Maine. Uh, and number three, again, is this self-executing? Uh, can anybody just look at the 14th Amendment, some state official, and say, I'm going to disqualify mm -hmm. Donald Trump? A really difficult constitutional question. Uh, because I think, uh, you know, he engaged in insurrection. Or is this something where you've got to have guidance from Congress? And by the way, there is a statute, a criminal statute, that Congress passed, 18 U.S.C. 2383, that's, that covers insurrection and rebellion. And it says that if you engage in it, not only can you be convicted, but uh, you're barred from office for life. Uh, from the office of the presidency or from any other office. And notably, nobody has even indicted Donald right. Trump for that. So exactly. I think all of those things are going to go into the mix. So presidential candidates Chris Christie, Ron DeSantis are slamming the decision to keep their opponent off the ballot. Watch this. I think there's some justification for doing this. It's not good for our democracy. In the end, Donald Trump should be defeated by the voters at the polls. Well, the idea that one bureaucrat in an executive position can simply unilaterally disqualify someone from office. Uh, it opens up Pandora's box. Can you have a Republican secretary of state uh, disqualify Biden from the ballot? Because he's let in 8 million people illegally. I mean, Saul, that's the question here. The precedent, it seems to me, would be catastrophic. If the Supreme Court doesn't take this or, or doesn't rule against Maine and Colorado, what might the implications be? Well, I think you're correct that that a kind of constitutional chaos would result, but you're still talking about uh, a policy argument, a prudential argument is that you're making. I agree with you, but the more important point is that this is just wrong. Colorado is wrong as a matter of constitutional law. Maine is wrong as a matter of constitutional law, and I think you'll see a very strong opinion, I hope a unanimous opinion from the U.S. Supreme Court on this. Yeah, and, and that's something that I've heard many people say. The decision shouldn't just be uh, against Colorado or Maine, but it ought to be unanimous. There should be no daylight between any of the justices on this. We shall see. Saul Weisenberg, thank you for your insight today. Thanks for having me.